So, okay, I'm being timed. So we had the talk earlier on with Tim and uh, Dave and Andy mentioning that if you write to shared storage, um, well, unless you have some pretty, pretty serious locality, it hurts. And that's a general thing. We've, there's been a bunch of different ways of optimizing if you are read mostly. Um, but what do we do about updates? Because after a while, the kernel has to do some updates. So that's part of the meaning of life here. And we can see how this uh, plays out here. Um, this is from a paper that made CACM a little while ago. Uh, RCU and hazard pointers are two read-friendly approaches, and they scale quite nicely. Uh, up to, I've only went up to 64 CPUs here. But if we update, and this is a bucket locking approach, so each time it acquires a lock, it's doing a memory update. Once you hit the edge of a socket, life gets hard. It tails up a little bit here because of the hyper-threading that shows up, you know, because you've got your 32 hyper-threads and then your other 32 hyper-threads. And global locking, as expected, is horrible. But um, this line here is not suffering from lock contention. This is memory contention. And this is really illustrating Dave and Andy and uh, Tim's point. Uh, if you have to update to shared memory um, and there's no locality, life is hard. And this, this is a log scale, all right? So you can see there's better part of two orders of magnitude between this line and the two up there. And, uh, you know, uh, reads are nice and all that, but uh, sooner or later you're gonna have to do some update just in case you wanna change state or something. And so we'd really like a better way to deal with that. And uh, again, you know, right there, those are the two that are causing us trouble. It turns out that there are some special cases where you can do updates and get really good scalability. Um, let's see, uh, any guesses? Exactly, very good, right there. And uh, what happens is we just have a counter for each thread or each CPU, depending on what it con thing you're in. And uh, for updates, you non-atomically increment your own counter. You might need some access once's or something like that to keep the compiler from messing you up. Um, and then when you read it, you have to sum all the counters, which is slow. But in a lot of cases, the reads are very, very infrequent. You really update heavily, heavy. For example, if you have a system that's using this for networking, you're going to update every time you receive or send a packet you're going to read it out maybe once every five seconds if somebody happens to be monitoring the system at that point, maybe not. Um, and of course, you're relying on uh, the laws of addition, and you're also allowing for the fact that it's statistical, and so if there's some short-term inaccuracy, nobody's gonna care. And uh, the cool thing is, is the updates you have constant work, linear scalability, and really good performance. Another thing that's used really heavily, um, and it's almost to the point where people don't even think of it, is when you have peer partitioning, where each CPU owns its data, each thread owns its data, uh, and uh, the, per the stack is an example of this. And there you get the same single-threaded performance benefits and perfect scalability, but not everything can use these two. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of other ones. Uh, this, uh, uh, there's a company called LMAX uh, at LinuxConf AU, a guy named Adrian Sutton presented on it. There's a couple URLs there, and presumably this will get put up somewhere at some point. And the constraint he has is that only two threads can ever access the same location at the same time. All right? And that means that your memory contention is limited because you don't have this thing where you've got, you know, a thousand threads hammering the same location at the same time. And then he uses fixed array circular FIFOs to pipe the data between data processing stages. And each data processing stage is represented by a thread. We've got a diagram on the next page here. And what he gets, he gets very nearly uniprocessor performance, especially if, you have heavy, if the processing is heavyweight. The only place where he loses is when he's feeding into and out of the FIFOs where he has to take the cache miss to move from one processor to another. Other than that, it works well. And uh, here's an example of it. We got some input. We do some processing of thread. We put it in a FIFO. We have another thread do fan out, and it just duplicates the data and puts it in two FIFOs, which are then processed. We have a thing that fans in, and we have the output and that allows us to be primarily doing single-threaded, but get parallel throughput. Um, there are some other approaches. Uh, Harbor transactional memory has some promise. You guys saw Andy Clean's talk, and uh, the future will tell. We'll see what happens there. There's also some research topic kind of thingies, researchy things with more sophisticated use of associativity and commutativity, kind of like split counters, but for more uh, elaborate data structures. 
And uh, you know, uh, this is kind of wide open. If you got ideas, you know, this is a uh, there's going to be a lot of special cases, and I think there's a lot of opportunity for some great work here. So, questions are ooh, I've been beeped. Uh, questions or thoughts or whatever. Going once, yeah, Matthew. Mm -hmm. Oh, that the line named a bucket is a multi-bucket hash table with a lock per bucket, and so um, the scaling's not the the, the scalability's not killing us there. It's the memory locality. Now, if you could arrange it so that a given CPU tended to hit one bucket, that'd be a different story. Then you could get locality and uh, do well as well. But you know. Uh, that may or may not be easy to arrange. Uh, then that's what's behind a lot of the distributed processes where they do sharding. They do exactly that. They make it so local that no other CPU has access to it, or no other system has access to it. But those are good approaches, and I should have put that up there. That's right. If that's it, uh, thank you all for your time and attention, and uh, I'll hand it back to Donald. Thank you.